Hello everybody. Welcome to story time again from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. The story we have for you today comes from Ireland and it's a story that involves a little bit of magic and a lot of love. This is the story of the Seal Prince. Once long ago there was a king or a lord and a lady, not a king and queen. The, the, the land was not quite big enough for that, but a lord and a lady that ruled over the island of Inishnalron. And they had a little daughter whom they loved very much, and her name was Grania. Now, Grania was about eight years old when this story begins, and she was a very gentle girl and a very pretty girl. And everyone loved her very, very much because she was just, a, she was so wonderful and so sweet and so caring and, and took care of everyone. And it, she was going to be a wonderful lady someday. They all knew that. Well, on this particular day, it was Grania's eighth birthday and she and her mother went down to the seashore. They lived on an island. They went down to the seashore quite a lot. Well, they went down to the seashore and Grania noticed a large pile of driftwood and, and debris. There'd been a storm the night before. And when she went over to the pile of driftwood and debris, she discovered that there was a rather heavy piece of wood in the pile and stuck underneath it was a little baby seal. And the poor thing was just making squeaking sounds and trying to get loose and it couldn't get loose. And well, Grania, she felt rather sorry for the seal. And so she tried her hardest to push that big heavy piece of wood off of the seal and she couldn't. And she tried and she tried and she just couldn't. So then she called her mother and she asked her mother to come help her. And she and her mother both pushed and they still could not move that piece of wood off of that poor little baby seal. Well, finally, they spotted some fishermen nearby and they called to the fishermen to come and help them. And with the help of those big, strong fishermen, they were finally able to push that piece of wood off of that poor little baby seal. Well, that baby seal, it was so exhausted that it couldn't even flop its tail and thank you. It was so tired. And Grania went and she got some water and she poured it over the seal so he could still be wet because seals like to be damp. And, and she just put her arm around the seal and she just hugged the seal so that it would know that there was somebody here. And there was a, a cut in the seal's side and she really wanted to help and heal it, but she, she wasn't magical, so she didn't know how to heal it. So she just stroked the seal's head and gave him hugs. And a few minutes later, suddenly the sea began to boil and roll and two great big seals came flopping out of the ocean and between them they put that little seal and they kind of picked him up between them and they helped him get into the water and they all swam away. Well the next year on Grania's birthday she went back to the beach with her mother and that little baby seal do you know it was waiting for her. Now, of course it wasn't a baby anymore it was much bigger but he was waiting for her and so Grania played with the seal a bit and gave him some hugs and she knew it was her seal. She knew just from looking in his eyes. Well, every year on her birthday, from then on, she would go down to the beach in the morning and the seal would be waiting for her and they would play and she would talk to the seal and she came to rather love that seal a bit. Well, on her 18th birthday, Grania looked at her parents and realized that they were starting to get rather old and that she was going to have to get married soon for she was going to be the lady of Inishnaron very soon and that she would need to have a husband to help her to rule the people and so that she could have someone, a child, who after her would become the lord or lady of Inishnaron. Well, that morning, when she went down to the beach, the seal was not waiting for her. But there was a young man who had a gray cloak wrapped around him. And he had a, a golden torque about his neck. It was a, a, a very fancy kind of necklace around his neck with stones set in it. So it was quite clear that he was some sort of prince. And so, Grania looked at him and well, he was quite handsome, 
And so she went over towards him and she said, hello. I'm, I'm the Lady Grania. I, I'm the daughter of the Lord and Lady of Inishnaron. Who are you? Can I help you? And he said, do you not know me, lady? And she stepped a, a little bit closer and she looked at him. And suddenly she recognized him. His eyes were the eyes of her friend, the seal. Well, now Grania got a little scared and, and a little worried because she had heard stories her entire life about the seal people, the seal men and seal women who would take a mortal with them into the sea and that mortal was never seen again. And some said that the seals took that person down to their death to drown in the ocean. And some said that they took that person to Tir Nanog, the land of the ever living ones of the fairies. And, and they would live there together. And so she was rather frightened because if this was a man, but it was her seal, then this was one of the seal people. And she said, who, wh what is your name, good sir? And, and what, what do you want here? And he said, well, you may call me Deodatus. That is the name that my mother uses. For in the land, the, the, the language of a land far from here, it means gift of God. And I am here to take you with me to the sea so that you can see all of the wonders that your mortal eyes would never have believed possible. And he reached out with his cloak and he went to wrap it around her shoulders. And Grania knew that was how the seal people took the mortals. They would wrap the cloak around their shoulders and then the mortal would lose all will to stay on the land. And so she, she turned and she ran and she hid behind a rowan tree because she knew that the rowan tree, that was protection against any magic, either good or ill. And she hid behind the tree and she said, I am sorry, Deodatus. I would love to go with you, but I cannot. You see, I am the only child of my mother and father. And well, to leave them, it would break their hearts. And besides, Someday, I will be lady of this island of Inish Naron, and the people here, they need me. They need me to be their lady and to help them and to take care of them and to make sure that they have everything that they need. I cannot just leave them. As much as I would like to go with you, I cannot leave here. I am sorry. Well, Deodatus, he said he understood. And Grania ran back up to her fa father's castle. And every year after that, from her 18th birthday on her 19th birthday on her 20th birthday, she would go down to the seashore and Deodatus would be waiting for her and she would hide behind the rowan tree and stay by the rowan tree, but they would talk. And every year on her birthday, the Prince of Iona came the Prince of Sky came, many different princes of many different countries came and many people came because Grania was so beautiful and she was so gentle and she was so kind and they had all heard about her. But every year on her birthday, she refused to marry them. She turned them down because her heart was already given to Deodatus. Well, after six years of this, on her 25th birthday, her father told her that this was not acceptable. He said, Grania, I love you, my dear, but I am getting old. I would like to see my grandchildren. You must marry. Do not go to the beach today. This is silly. You must marry. I am going to choose a husband for you, whether you like it or not. Well, when Grania was finally able to get out of the castle, she ran down to the beach and she threw herself into Deodatus' arms and she said, Deodatus, take me with you. Take me to the sea. My father is going to marry me to whomever he pleases. I will have no say in it. Take me with you. And he said, no, 
Granya, as much as I would like to take you with me, I cannot do that. My honor will not allow me to let you abandon your people like that. Your people need you. Your parents need you. We cannot simply leave them. Granya cried, but she knew he was right. Well, that night at Granya's birthday feast, her father stood up and he said, my daughter has refused every man who has come and offered for her hand. Therefore, I have decided that upon the morrow, my daughter will be given in marriage to whomever can bring me the largest catch of fish. Well, there was a bit of a pause after that because everyone was rather surprised. And then suddenly there was the sound of pounding feet as every single man in the hall ran for the door so that he could get into his boat and go out and go fishing and bring back the biggest catch and win the Lady Grania as his wife. Well, this made Grania very sad for you see, the only single men left on the island were the ones who were not very good catches. They were not very nice looking they might not be the nicest of people. Because you see on the island, the good ones, the handsome ones and the nice ones, they got taken first, of course. And the, the only ones that were left were the, the men who were not quite so nice. But her father had made his decision and she was going to have to live with it. Well, the rising sun showed a trail of men hauling big nets full of fish up to the castle. And there was Manus who had big hands and big feet and bowed legs and a wart on the end of his nose. And there was, there was Frang who was tall and skinny and had a pointed head and a pointy nose that was always dripping. And there was Bara and there was Art and there was Pole and there was Al and there was all these men. And they all came in with all these big loads of fish and they heaped up the fish and they counted them all. And in the end, Frang was the winner. And as Grania stood up from her chair, not very happy about it, but ready to go and give her hand to Frang, Suddenly, another man came into the room and he was wrapped in a gray cloak and he said, I have come to try for the hand of the Lady Grania. I hear she's being given away for a load of dead fish. Well, the contempt was quite strong in his voice and her father stood up and he said, well, she has turned down every man who has tried for her. So she will be given to the man who has brought me the greatest load of fish. Are you here to try to stop the proceedings? And the man said, oh, no, no. I am here to enter my load of fish. And when he stepped into the room and threw back the hood of his cloak, Grania could see that it was Deodatus. And after him into the room came four or five men, all carrying, all wearing gray cloaks and all carrying big nets full of fish and when they poured out their fish onto the ground the pile was much larger than anyone else's and suddenly some of the fishes as they poured them out on the ground some of the fishes mouths popped open and inside of each mouth was a gently glowing gem well Grania smiled and she stepped forward to and she she took Deodatus's hand and she said father this is Deodatus he is the man that I love. He is the prince of the seal folk. And her father said, oh, no, no. Grania, I love you too much to give you to the seal folk, my dear. No, I am sorry. I, 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 will, I will take away this requirement. There, the, you do not have to marry him. You, you, he will take you away to the ocean. You, you, you cannot do this thing, Grania. And Deodatus said, my lord, I will not take her away from you. It is too important that she be here for you, her mother and her father, and for all of her people. I will make a pact with you. If you will give me Grania's hand in marriage, 
I will stay here. And he took off his gray cloak and he gave it to Grania. And he said, you keep my seal skin. And when we have had children and when our children are old enough to rule this island of Inishnaron, then and only then will I take you to the sea with me. And then we will go to Tirnanog and we will rule the seal people. Well, that was acceptable to Grania's father and to Grania herself. And so she took that seal skin and she put it away in a safe place. And as the years passed, Grania and Deodatus were good rulers of Inishnaron. And they had children, a son and a daughter. And when their son was 18 years old, Grania went looking for Deodatus and she couldn't find him. And someone told her that he had gone down to the seashore, as he frequently did to look at the sea. Well, Grania went and she fetched that seal skin and she took it with her to the shore. And when she got to the shore, she came up behind Deodatus and she laid that seal skin on his shoulders. And she said, come, it is time. Let us go to the sea and to Tirnanog and to rule your people. For we have been ruling my people and our son is old enough to do it now. And so Deodatus, he took that sealskin and he wrapped it around her and they went into the ocean and they were never seen on the shore again. But ever since that day, the people of Inishnaron, when they have a new baby, they take him down and they lay that baby on the shore where the waves can wash over it just a bit, not enough to drown it, just a bit, just to get it wet. And they lay that baby in the shore and they ask the blessing upon their baby from Lady Grania and Lord Deodatus. And there's many a sailor, a fisherman from that, that island who has had their life saved in a storm when their boat capsizes by two great seals who come up and raise that fisherman above the water and bring him back to the shore. And that is the story of the seal prince from Ireland. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you again on Monday at 3 p.m. Central Daylight Time when we will have another story for you here on the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois Facebook page. Bye! Have a great weekend!